to Yogi Hollow Farm. This is Lisa and today I'm going to talk to you more about hydroponic growing because you know I've got a passion for it. As you know, I have been trying to expand my ability to grow indoors in a cold climate. And so while the rest of the parts of the country that are warm right now are getting their seedlings ready and all that, I'm growing inside because we've got lots of snow outside. Come take a look what it looks like outside in South Dakota. Here's an update on the mini bok choy that I'm growing hydroponically. As you can see, it is looking good and healthy. Let me show you the roots that we've got going on here. Look at those roots. So I'm gonna be careful putting that back in. And this is my new plant that I just planted last night in rock wool. And that is Sweetheart Cherry Tomatoes. That's right. I'm going to try and grow tomatoes indoor using the Cracky method. But as I've mentioned before, we have to make some modifications because... These jars will not accommodate the root structure that the tomatoes will have because it's a longer growing plant. Now, I am using all of my net pots for the bok choy. So what does that mean? I have to make some. I had a brilliant idea and I'm gonna show you how I made some. And hopefully they'll work, but this will be an experiment. I love experimenting, so let's check it out. For this project, you're gonna need a large vessel that you will use as your container to put your water in for hydroponics. This happens to be a three pound size coffee container recycled. You'll need another container to use as a net pot. And this one is a 9.3 ounce container to give you an idea of sizes. You will need a soldering iron, you will need a hobby knife, and some kind of writing implement. I'm using a marker to be able to mark the circle on the top of the container. Let's get started. Once your soldering iron is heated up, you're going to start by poking holes in your container. There's no particular pattern. However, you do want to provide several holes because you're trying to mimic a basket. But don't get hung up on the perfection of it. Instead, just think how can I get the most holes in my container so that way I'm mimicking a basket and I can get the most water to my roots. And the other thing to think about is the roots. The roots need to come through the container into the vessel. That's how it soaks up the water. Well, I'm putting the holes in the net pot. I want to hear from you guys. What's one thing that you're proud of that you upcycled or repurposed into an amazing project? Let me know in the comments down below. And it's a thick bottom, so it takes a little bit more than like a cheap plastic pot would or a margarine cup might take or a yogurt cup. So you have to be careful. Please take all precautions also for safety so you're not starting any fires in your home and you're also prepared not to hurt yourself or injure yourself. Now I'm gonna try on the sides and I'm gonna do it like this so you can see me. As you're going around the end, I did wanna remind you to let the soldering iron do the work for you. You can see it goes right through there on its own. Be careful not to put your holes too closely together or you will break open the side of this container. I do highly recommend that you do this outdoors where you have some ventilation. I happen to have windows open. 
All right. And then when you're done, unplug your soldering iron, put it on a safe metal base so that way you have a place for it to cool and you don't have any chance of a fire. But this is a finished net pot. So now we're going to cut the hole in the top for the net basket to go in. And what I'm going to do is trace this narrow part of the container because I want it to rest on one of these notches. So I'm going to try to go all the way to this edge right here so that way I can kind of screw it in is my thought. Um, like I said, I've never done this before, but I wanted to show you guys what my process was. And I'll trace it with a marker and then I have this hobby knife set, which I'm going to take care of now. So I'm just going to put it right in the center of the coffee can. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the circle that I drew there. And I'm actually going to leave it on the can because I think it'll be easier to carve out. And I'm going to carefully do this. And I'm actually going to go a little inside the line. And then slowly take more out because you want it to be a tighter fit versus a loose fit. because you want the pot to sit right in there. And you'll note that I did not cut it into a perfect circle. And the reason why is I wanted to be able to have those rough edges to catch the edge of the pot so it fit tightly. Right. And so, yeah, so the other thing I'm gonna try is this, because again, I'm trying to get, ooh, that worked out great. See? Going slow and thinking about it was wonderful. So what I did was I cut it by the narrow edge of the pot. And you have to remember this is wider, so that's why it won't sit through like a typical net pot. But because I cut it, I could slip it from underneath, which I will do before I put my seeds in. And there's my net pot. Here's the finished product. There's my net basket. I'm gonna go put some clay pebbles in it so you can see what that would look like. And then I have my container and obviously I would fill my water with all hydroponics right down here to start with and then eventually the roots will grow down in here. Because I don't have a plant to put in here just yet because I just planted my cherry tomato seeds, I put a piece of rock wool cube in there and put some of the clay pebbles around it so you can see how the net cup will work. Now, it's a very deep net cup. I did that on purpose because I also wanted to be able to provide support to a tomato plant which could grow quite large. And I wanna be able to make sure there's enough room there to be able to put more clay pebbles around here because of the sheer structure of the plant. However, if you are growing smaller things, you could use things like margarine cups or maybe yogurt cups. I think something a little thicker than a solo cup. However, I have seen folks use solo cups also. But again, just use your imagination and use the things that you have on hand and you will surprise yourself. This is a thrifty way to be able to grow. And it's a great way to upcycle and repurpose things that you already have in your home. Well, there you have it, guys. Thrifty, upcycling, cracky method, hydroponic growing vessels. And we have a net basket that we made. We use another container to be able to put the water in, which simulates the same exact premise as the mason jar method 
And we know that mason jars have been hard to find, so we have to come up with ways to be creative, plus save some money. So as a part of our thrifty homesteading series, we hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you'll check out our other videos on Cracky Method hydroponic growing, as well as our thrifty homesteading playlists. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you get notified the next time we do another video like this. And give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.